Classical programming can basically be classified into four ways as a tabulation. So a classic example of a tabulation kind of dynamic programming is uh, combination. So what does combination mean? Suppose you want to compute n choose r. Uh, the recurrence for n choose r is n choose r equal to n minus 1 choose r plus n minus 1 choose r minus 1. How we get the recurrence is n choose r denotes out of n objects you have to uh, choose some r objects. So consider the first object you can either choose the object or not choose the object. If you choose the object then it reduces to n minus 1 choose r minus 1. That is out of the remaining n minus 1 objects you have to choose r minus 1 objects. And if you do not choose the first object, out of the remaining n minus 1 objects, you have to choose r objects. So yesterday Anshuman taught you how to compute n choose r modulo p. What is the complexity for that? I mean pre-processing and query complexity. Log n plus k. K. Means for every p plus log n to the base p. So pre-processing time is order p and a query answering time is log n to the base p. So we will now see a pre-processing order n square and query answering order one time of uh, computing n choose r modulo p. This method has the advantage that p doesn't need to be a prime. So, so basically we have this recurrence. So when will this recurrence not be valid? For which values of uh, n and r will this recurrence not be valid? r equal to 0 it won't be valid because this goes to minus 1 other than that okay r equal to n basically in which case n minus 1 choose r will not have a meaning so the code will look something like uh, for n is from uh, 1 to say uh, 1 to the value you want to compute to say 1000 for r is from uh, 0 to n if uh, r equal to 0 or r equal to n then in uh, so choose n r will be 1 in that case if r is 0 or r equal to n else choose n r will be equal to choose n minus 1 of r plus choose n minus 1 of r minus 1 so this is the pseudo code for computing choose of all numbers say where n and r are less than or equal to 1000. So if you want to compute it modulo some value p, you just need to do mod p. This will compute the choose properly. Okay, so this is an example of tabulation. The second area is optimization, shortest path in a graph. So say you want to compute the minimum or maximum value attained by a function, you can use dynamic programming for that. That is the optimization criteria. So one example for optimization will be the Floyd Washell. I mean, okay, all class short as per the algorithm. The question is given n vertices and you are given uh, the edge weights between each. Okay, we will cover it more uh, in a more detailed manner tomorrow. But just as an example for that, given n vertices and we are given the edge weights between all class of vertices, find the shortest distance from any path to any other path that can be done using dynamic programming so that's an example of optimization so okay the next is function computation on a graph this deals with counting the number of paths and similar thing so I'll give you a problem and explain how, uh, how you can solve it okay so assume you are given n vertices uh, okay or assume you are given uh, just consider it as an array of n elements from 1 to n and you are given some edges between index i to index j 
uh, having a weight, a weighted edge from uh, node i to node j and always you can assume that i is less than j. So you will have edges of this form having a weight connecting many passive vertices in this array. So uh, okay, edges are unweighted here. You are given like so you are given many edges of the form i to j count the number of ways to reach n from 1 so everyone got the problem I'll repeat it again given n vertices and you are given edges of the form i to j such that i is less than j so you basically have a graph of say 1 2 3 and 4 so suppose the edges are given by 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 3 to 4, 1 to 3 and 1 to 4. Count the number of ways to, uh, ways to reach 4 from 1. In this case answer will be 3. Uh, can you give an algorithm how to solve this problem? Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, then answer of j will be the number of parts from the j vertex. Okay. Um, initially, sorry, okay, yeah. so answer of n is 1 um, and uh, for a loop from uh, like n to 1, uh, answer of n is uh, summation answer of uh, neighbor of n or uh, yeah, summation answer of neighbor of n, right n to Yeah, okay. So, his approach is, yeah, so his approach is, Surely, uh, so assume you have a array answer, so the, or okay answer denoting the number of ways, answer of i denotes the number of ways to reach the vertex n from i. So basically answer of n equal to 1 because number of ways to reach the vertex n from n is 1 which is itself the no path. So for any other j from uh, n minus 1 to 1. If you have a node j, look at all the outgoing edges from j and add up the value of answer of all these word, vertices. So I will write a pseudocode so that you can understand it better. For uh, i from n minus 1 to 1, uh, for uh, okay. So for i from n minus one to one, answer of i is zero initially, and so for all edges from i, so from for all edges which start from i. Answer of so for all edges say okay i comma j for all edges so for all edges i comma j answer of i plus equal to answer of j so what is happening here from i you can go to many vertices j so, and you have already computed the answer for the number of ways of reaching n from all these j. So all you have to do is from this vertex i you can go to all these points. So these are the number of ways and so if you add all these you will get the answer for i. Is this pseudocode clear? I mean please ask if anyone does not understand what is going on. Yeah sure. So answer of 4 is 1. So we are basically computing the number of ways of reaching 4 from 1. Okay. So answer of 4 is 1. So for i is from n minus 1 to 1. So i is now 3. Answer of 3 is initially 0. And so for all edges i comma j. So i from 3 there is only 1 edge. So from 3, 3 to 4 answer of i plus equal to answer of j. So answer of 3 is plus equal to answer of 4. So 
answer of 3 will be equal to 1. So next when we go to 2, for all edges which start from 2, so first answer of 2 is 0, for all edges which start from 2, say, so there is only 1 edge 2 comma 4, answer of 2 plus equal to answer of 4. So answer of 2 will also be equal to 1. So for next for 1, answer of 1 will be 0. For all edges are going from 1, so we have the edges 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3 and 1 comma 4. We do answer of 1 plus equal to all these. So we will get the equation answer of 1 will be equal to answer of 2 plus answer of 3 plus answer of 4. All these 3 are 1. So answer of 1 will be equal to 3. So this is a typical example of counting pro counting the number of parts in a graph. So this is another flavor of DP. The final uh, example is function computation on a probabilistic graph. So what that means is, okay so first I will again explain the pro give the problem, ask for a solution and then, so assume you are given a similar graph like that, like the previous problem and you are also given a value p greater than 0.5 say, which tells you the, so okay let me explain, assume you are in vertex 1, you have 3 choices here, 3 edges are going from 1, correct? So what you can do is, you can choose one of these three edges for you to move on. And for the edge you want to move, assume the probability with which you move in that edge is P. And so, okay, so one has three, uh, three edges out of it. So there are three edges. Suppose I am choosing that, okay, I want to move to this 2 so I am choosing this 1 comma 2 edge the probability with which I move in this 1 comma 2 edge is P the probability with which I move in this 1 comma 4 edge is 1 minus P by 2 and the probability with which I move in this 1 comma 3 edge is again 1 minus P by 2 so basically from a node if you have say M edges out of it you can you your aim is to choose one of the edges, the strategy of choosing one of the edges is with you. So you will choose one edge and in that edge you will go with the probability of P. In the remaining edges you will go with the probability of 1 minus P by M minus 1. So everyone understood the definition of the graph at least. So the same graph and the input is just another probability P. Just that instead of in the last question, you you have a definite move. That is, the last question was basically p equal to one. Wherever you want to move, you can definitely move. In this case, there is a probability p with which you move in the correct direction. So, uh, so basically, okay, maximize the expected value, expected number of edges you have to move to reach the node n. I will define more clearly. So our aim is to maximize the expected value. So what is the expected value? Say for this graph, uh, expected value for 4 from 4 to reach 4 is going to be 0. So answer for 4 is going to be 0 for sure because the number of edges you need to take to reach 4 from 4 is 0. Are everyone okay with this? from 3 you have one outgoing edge so you can you will choose this with the probability p but since there are no other edges there is only one edge so there is no question of a probability here you will move in this edge a definite way that is this holds only if m is greater than 1 so for 3 the number of edges you need expected number of edges you need to take to reach 4 is 1 because whatever you do, you can reach 4 in one step. So, answer for 3 is 1.